Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Claudia, come over here to the sofa a moment. I want to measure this sleeve. Just a second, Mom. I'm in the middle of a sentence. Don't tell me you're still writing that one thank you letter. I am. And I don't know what to say. Honestly, you'd think Julie would know better than to send Bobby a present. Why shouldn't she send Bobby a present? Well, in the first place, because he's not old enough to know it's a present for him. And in the second place, I am old enough to know that I have to write a thank you note for it. A sad state of affairs indeed. Therefore, I wish Bobby were a little older and I were a little younger. Then he'd write the letter and you'd get the presents. Exactly. Really, sending a silver rattle to a baby not four months old. I never heard of such a silly thing. Babies love rattles. But it's so expensive. Oh, well, she never had a baby of her own, so no wonder she doesn't realize that they don't know the difference between silver and celluloid. And Julia doesn't care whether the baby does or not. She does, and that's all that matters. She really is terribly generous. She's given us the most wonderful presents since we're married. I was certainly lucky when I drew Julia as my husband's sister-in-law, wasn't I? And I don't mean that greedy. You were lucky when you drew your husband. Yep, and I knew it the minute I set eyes on him. I figured right away he was the right father for my children. That's an interesting variation on an old theme. What I like so much about David as a father is that he's never fatuous about it. He didn't even seem impressed this morning when Bobby reached for his orange juice. Nothing to be impressed about. Has any son of yours ever reached for his orange juice, Mrs. Brown? You were all the son I ever had. I'm not very proud of you, but you reached for things in a little less than four months, too. All babies do. All babies? There's nothing precocious about it, nothing at all. You take the pleasure out of everything. Still, I expected David to be a little impressed. He's not supposed to know that Bobby is just average. He's his father. David's impressed. Impressed that any child of yours is even average. Dear Mama, you say the sweetest things to me. Anyway, he is getting frightfully cute. Who, David or the baby? David, of course. He's starting to act as if he really knew what he was doing. He's, he follows me around the room with his eyes. And he gurgles when I pick him up. You know what? I've decided to keep him. That's good. Such a nuisance exchanging things these days. Say, I wonder where David is. He should be back from the village by now. Stop worrying about him. Well, he's not around to hear me. I hope nothing's happened. Now, what could have happened? Well, he only went downtown to buy some tobacco. He's been gone for over half an hour. David drives sensibly. He doesn't rush when there's no reason like someone I know. I hope David will be proud of his son. Changing the subject, eh? You know, it must be awful when a father is Get isn't... back to that thank you note of yours. I'm getting dizzy. Just finishing it. Love, Claudia. Then come over here and let me measure this sleeve. Mama, this sweater is going to be beautiful when you're finished. I hope you realize my feelings have been very hurt lately. What have I done now? Well, you've been knitting for Bobby for the last, um, four and nine. For the last 13 months. It's about time you got back to me. I'm practically threadbare. Claudia, stand still. Scratch, please. Right there behind my left shoulder blade. How can I measure you if you wiggle round? Get, get the right place, Mama. Right there under the left shoulder blade. Why don't you buy yourself a back mm. scratcher? Are you resigning from your job? I am. Resignation not accepted. Put more emotion into it, Mrs. Brown. The minute David comes in, I'm going up to bed. I ask you to do one little thing for me, and the next thing I hear, you're going up to bed. Ah, that's enough. Hold out your arm. Yes, ma'am. Well, that's a pretty pose. Hey, David, you're home. Will you stand still, Claudia? You just made me drop six stitches. It's my husband's fault. What were you doing downtown so long? I had a rendezvous with a redhead. What color was her hair? Blonde. Oh, I love blonde redheads. David, your wife is impossible. Thank you. I've been trying to measure her arm for the last five minutes. 
She simply can't hold it still. Hold your arm still. I am. You're not. If you don't behave properly, I'll add three inches to this sweater and give it to David. Hmm. Mm. Six inches on each side. Bragging. Now tell me, what were you doing downtown so long? I stopped in to see a double feature. Any good? No, terrible. I'm going to bed. What's the matter? Can't you stand my company for even five minutes, Mrs. Brown? You're all right alone, David, but the woman you married is a little difficult to take. Claudia, have you been disrespectful to your poor old mother? (gasps) How can you accuse me of such a thing, David? You know I treat Mama with the utmost respect. Come on, David, you haven't told me what you were doing downtown so long. May as well confess, David. Confess what? What took you so long, buying a can of tobacco? Oh, you too. What? You're just as inquisitive as your daughter. I inherited it from her. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you. Here it is, one can of tobacco. Is that all? Mama, I'm suspicious. I'm suspicious, too. What's that bulge in your coat pocket, David? Mrs. Sherlock Holmes. You may as well give up, David. She'll nag you until you confess. And if she doesn't, I will. Darling, really, I'm touched beyond words. What is it? What is what? The present you bought me. Who said anything about bringing you a present? The look in your eye, the look of a man who just bought his wife a present for no reason. I didn't buy you any present for no reason. That's why I love you. You're such a liar. Oh, don't keep her in suspense. She's bursting. I can't imagine what it is. I haven't been hinting for anything lately. Look, look now. How could I buy you a present? What store would be open at this hour of the night? The stationery store where you bought the cigar. Greedy, isn't she? She was feeling sorry for herself because Bobby was getting all the presents for the family. Oh, I'm afraid you're in for an awful letdown. Isn't he sweet? I am not sweet. And we were going to scold him for being out late. It just shows you. You must never jump to conclusions. Never. Now, David, out with it so I can go to bed. All right. Here it is. See, Mama? I know my husband. Go on, open it. It's all wrapped up so pretty. Sort of heavy, too. Can't imagine what it is. Well, you'll never guess. Well, I'm I'm certainly glad that you're not the kind of a husband, David, that the minute he has a son, he forgets all about his wife. Hmm. What does that mean? Well, just that it's a waste of money to buy things for a baby. Of course, it's all right for Julia, wasting little money, buying baby a silver rattle, but I'm simply not going to allow myself any such indulgences. Hmm. You're not. You know, this afternoon when Mom and I were downtown, we absolutely forbade ourselves to buy anything for Bobby. You did? In spite of the fact that he, you know, he sort of sees things now and he reaches out for them. Still, he's, he's much too young to know how to enjoy anything. Stop giving us lectures, Claudia, and open that package. Well, I just wanted to make David realize that I'm not too young for this sort of thing. I, and I'm not too old either. Maybe you'd better not open the package, darling. Oh, I'm opening it. David, Hmm? were your ears burning while you were driving home from downtown? No, not especially. Mama was saying all sorts of nice things about you. That's not true, David. I didn't open my mouth. Claudia was doing all the talking as usual. Mama was saying that you were a wonderful father because you didn't dote. No, Bobby's not much to dote about. He's just like any other baby. Sleeping all the time, eating all the time. And wet all the time. Claudia, will you please stop fiddling over that package? I'm going to have a nervous breakdown. I'm opening it, Mama. I'm just sidetracked a little. Then give it to me. I can open a package and get sidetracked at the same time. Well, you're older than I am. Here we are. Last layer of paper. You're going to be awfully disappointed. Nothing you could buy from me could ever disappoint me, darling. Before I look and see what it is, I just want you to know that anything you give me, I love. Well, just open the package. Gosh, everybody looking at me this way. I'm getting so nervous. Yeah, but you don't break anything. Oh, look. Isn't it beautiful? It's a locomotive. Exactly. It's a locomotive. A black locomotive. It is. Just what I wanted. Isn't I, it? I thought you'd been ailing for one. Yes, I, I, I've i been wishing for months that somebody would give me a black locomotive. Yes, you mentioned it to me once or twice. 
I told you you'd be disappointed. Who said anything about being disappointed? Now, maybe this will teach you not to jump to conclusions. I don't see why you say that. This is a, a, a stunning black locomotive. Mm, it is that. And look here. Look here. Let me show you something. It, it shoots sparks out of the funnel when it rolls across the floor. It does? Mm-hmm. It does. Mm-hmm. Works just like a real one. What will they think of next? I don't know. They certainly do think of wonderful things for toys these days. Now, look at, look at this contraption. Miraculous. It's not miraculous, but it's pretty wonderful. If you say so, dear. Mm-hmm. You're disappointed, aren't you? Why, that, that's the last thing I am. Just because I expected it to be a present for me, that I'm disappointed that it isn't ridiculous. Well, I would be if it were me. Oh, no, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. Not if it were a present for your son instead. Well, yes, you're right. I, I figure that every little boy ought to have a locomotive. Did you say little boy, David? Well, he's four months old, isn't he? And he's he's reaching for things, isn't he? Well, well, this morning he grabbed his orange juice right out of your hand. That makes an old, old man of him. With a long white beard. Claudia, what was that you were saying a moment ago about David and doting? I remember all too well. I am not a doting father. Now, here, concentrate. You wind it up this way. Yes. There, now. Now, you put it on the floor, give it a shove, and it rolls off. <laughs> <laughs> there, you see the sparks starting to fly out of the smokestack? Mama, I was <laughs> all wrong, all wrong. What about now? It just shows you can be married to a husband for over a year and not know him at all. What have I done now? You're not a doting father, darling. You're not even a doting husband. David, you bought that locomotive for yourself. Bought it for myself? (laughs) I did not. Did I? Did you? Well, if, if you don't tell Bobby, I'll let you play with it, too. When the clock strikes noon, that's the signal for a hasty bite of lunch in many households. Nutritionists frown on hasty eating. They suggest you sit down and relax at all meals. Why not pause and lunch refreshed with ice-cold Coca-Cola? You'll find an ice-cold bottle of Coke with your noonday sandwich or snack both relaxing and refreshing. Oh, Joe, mind if I gather some information from you? Well, not at all, Mrs. Brown. What's on your mind? Nothing serious. I was just wondering how many times you had bought presents for yourself under the guise of buying them for your son. Uh, Not once, Mrs. Brown. Uh, uh, Not twice. Uh, Perhaps three times. Good. Fathers sometimes let themselves be neglected. I uh, can't complain about that. And neither can David, I suppose. Especially tomorrow. Tomorrow? Claudia meets Jessie Mason. She's the widow of the man who was killed driving into David's car. Oh, And I uh, suppose it makes Claudia appreciate David about twice as much. That's the way life works. Well, be seeing you, Mr. King. Goodbye, Mrs. Brown. Thanks for stopping by. And remember, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember... Whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.